Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about pancreas. We all know that pancreas is having two types of functions, exocrine functions and endocrine functions. Now, what are the exocrine functions of the pancreas? The exocrine functions are production of digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes. We all know there is production of pancreatic juices. The, which are rich in bicarbonates and pancreas is going to produce all types of enzymes which are important for the digestion of carbohydrates, proteins, fats. We have discussed pancreatic uh, amylase, pancreatic lipases, colipases, uh, trypsinogen, chemotrypsinogen, carboxypeptidase. See, all these are coming under exocrine function of the pancreas. So, pancreas is producing digestive juices which are helping in digestion process. Okay. Now, let's discuss about the hormonal function of the pancreas or the endocrine function of the pancreas. Okay, so endocrine function means production of, involved in production of hormones. Okay, which hormones, from which cells, what are the functions, we will see in a minute. Now, see guys, here this leaf shaped organ which I am showing you, this is the pancreas. It's a very simple diagram. And what I am saying is, in this endocrine pancreas, there are four important types of cells, which are alpha cells, beta cells, D cells and F cells. Four different important, important types of cells are there. Now, please see here. Now, alpha cells, they are going to produce which hormone? Alpha cells produce glucagon. Beta cells produce insulin. And D cells produce somatostatin. And F cells produce pancreatic polypeptide. Usually students know these things. But most of the students don't know that the beta cells are not only producing insulin, but they will also produce other hormones like amylin and C peptide okay so totally beta cells of pancreas are going to produce three hormones insulin amylin and c peptide now let's take a minute and discuss what are the function of these hormones glucagon is going to uh, increase the blood glucose levels increase blood glucose levels Now, the most important hormone, insulin. What is the function of insulin? Insulin is going to decrease the blood glucose levels. Now, somatostatin, we have already discussed wherever you see somatostatin, it decreases everything. It decreases growth hormone production, it decreases insulin production, it decreases glucagon production, it decreases the gastric acid production, it decreases everything. So, somatostatin decreases here glucagon as well as it decreases insulin. Okay, both are going to be decreased. One important point I want you to know here, the C-peptide. What is the importance of the C-peptide? Normally, these beta cells, they will produce insulin and they will produce C-peptide. But in equimolar concentration, what does I mean by, for example, if 100 molecules of insulin is produced means, same 100 molecules of C-peptide will be produced. If 1000 molecules of insulin is produced endogenously means 1000 molecules of C-peptide will be produced and this C-peptide will be lost in the urine. So by looking at the C-peptide in urine, we can estimate how much insulin is getting produced inside the body. So C-peptide is an endogenous marker for insulin production. Okay, that's a very important point which you need to know. What are the important points about C-peptide guys? Let me write it down here. C-peptide produced in produced in equi molar concentration. Along with insulin. 
okay and the c peptide is used as endogenous marker it's endogenous marker of insulin production so by just by looking at the c peptide levels we can say whether the insulin is getting produced in the body or not now after this let's discuss about insulin some important points about insulin see insulin is a peptide hormone it's not a steroid hormone it's a peptide hormone uh, which means it's, it's not going to cross the cell membranes it have the receptors on the cell membrane here itself i just want to take a minute and just want uh, you to recall insulin is acting on which receptors insulin is acting on cell surface receptors or is it acting on the cytoplasmic receptors or nuclear receptors it's a peptide hormone it cannot cross the cell membrane so definitely it's acting on the cell surface receptors which type of cell surface receptors i have given a mnemonic pig pig hormones that's prolactin insulin and growth hormone they use which receptors tyrosine kinase receptors so even insulin also acts on tyrosine kinase receptors now after this th thyroid hormones just before we have discussed thyroid hormones are catabolic hormones now insulin is is a catabolic hormone or anabolic hormone it's a anabolic hormone okay it's a anabolic hormone it's not a catabolic it's anabolic hormone and who are these fellows banting and macleod see banting and macleod these are the scientists who have discovered insulin okay they have discovered insulin and sanger is the person who have given the structure okay he described the structure of insulin and a few important points insulin is something made up of two chains okay insulin is made up of two chains one alpha chain and beta chain two chains are there alpha chain and beta chain in alpha chain see this is it's a peptide hormone right so definitely it should be made up of amino acids how many amino acids are there in alpha chain how many amino acids are there there are 21 amino acids in alpha chain okay and in beta chain how many amino acids are there see beta chain i have shown here in the image it's a big, bit bigger chain it's a longer chain okay so here there are 30 amino acids so 30 plus 21 how much so in total insulin is a hormone which is made up of 51 amino acids okay very important point now after this let's discuss how insulin is stored inside a beta cell right now whatever i'm showing in a simple image that's a beta cell now inside the beta cell this is a vesicle inside this vesicle you can see these two chains these two chains are nothing but insulins okay insulins and these insulin molecules they are stored in the vesicles along with which ions zinc ions why it's a very important question insulin is stored along with zinc why because zinc it stabilizes the structure of insulin okay zinc stabilizes the structure of insulin it prevents the disintegration so zinc stabilizes the structure of insulin now after this first of all when do we need insulin we all know insulin is going to decrease the blood glucose levels so whenever your blood glucose level spikes up whenever your blood glucose levels are raising so that's the time from the beta cell insulin should come out so insulin is needed in those conditions where blood glucose levels are being elevated getting elevated so how it will happen we will see first of all let's take a condition your blood glucose levels are elevated let's start from here this is the beta cell beta cell which is having a resting membrane potential of minus 90 which means it's inactive now whenever you eat food what happens blood glucose levels are going to be elevated you have taken the food the food is getting digested in the stomach and the glucose is coming to your blood okay the carbohydrates are getting absorbed from the intestine and blood glucose levels are elevated now how your beta cell will know that blood glucose levels are elevated because with the help of a transporter there is a two-way transporter see this is a two-way transporter whenever there is more glucose in the blood then this transporter is going to allow glucose from the blood into the cell so after eating we all know inside your blood blood glucose levels are elevated glucose levels are elevated so this glucose will enter into the cell okay now question is how beta cell of pancreas 
senses blood glucose levels. How it senses the blood glucose levels? With the help of which transporter? GLUT2 transporter or glucose 2 transporter. Second type of question. Glucose 2 transporters are present in, they are present in beta cells of pancreas. Second, second question. Now, what do we want? We want this glucose not in a blood vessel. We want this glucose in a skeletal muscle. We want this glucose to store in adipose tissue. Okay, at the end of the day, we don't want glucose in the blood. We want this glucose to go into the tissues. Who is helping in the movement of this glucose into tissues? Who is helping? Insulin. So, how insulin is released first of all? Now, let's go one by one. See here. You have eaten the food. Blood glucose levels are elevated. Now, glucose have entered into the beta cell with the help of GLUT2 transporter. Now, this glucose is going into now glycolysis. Now, after glycolysis, Krebs cycle. After Krebs cycle, electron transport chain. At the end of the day, there is production of ATP. So, whenever you eat food, food digested, glucose came. That glucose is utilized by the beta cell for the production of ATP. Okay, ATP is there. Now, here one important point you, you should know. Before this, what is the state of the cell? The state of the cell is inactive. Please look at the previous image. See here the resting membrane potential of this beta cell before ATP production is minus 90. Why it is minus 90? Why the resting membrane potential is negative? It's because, see guys, there is continuous leakage of potassium from the cell. Okay, all the time potassium is leaking out of the cell. So, the cell is losing the positive charges. When the cell is losing positive charges, the cell is becoming uh, the cell is becoming uh, repolarized, or the cell is like you know hyperpolarized to say. The cell is totally inactive. Now, whenever there is production of ATP in this cell, now this ATP, what it is doing? See, I'm just showing the ATP with the star mark. Now, this ATP is going to this potassium channels and blocking the potassium channels. Now, these potassium channels are blocked. Why they are blocked? Because of ATP. So, these potassium channels are sensitive to ATP. So, that's why we say on the beta cells of pancreas, there are ATP sensitive potassium channels. Okay. Now, okay, sir. ATP is closing these potassium channels. So, what happens? Potassium start to accumulate inside the cell. Positive charges are getting accumulated in the cell. When positive charges are accumulating, what happens? The cell negativity will decrease from minus 90, it will become minus 40. So, cell is getting now depolarized. When cell is depolarized, what will happen? Now, these new channels will open. What are these channels? They are voltage gated calcium channels. Whenever the cell is getting depolarized because of the accumulation of potassium, calcium will start to come into the cell. Now, calcium is coming into the beta cell. Now, what this calcium will do? Sir, this calcium will come into the beta cell. Now, this calcium will bind with the vesicle which is storing the insulin. Here is the insulin. Now, this calcium will come and bind with the vesicle and helps in transport of this vesicle towards the uh, towards the capillaries for the release of insulin. See, now the calcium came into the cell. Now, the vesicle which contains the insulin is moving and at the end of the day, the insulin is getting released into the bloodstream. Now, what this insulin will do? Guys, please concentrate. We want the glucose. See, we want the glucose in the tissues. How it will happen? So, insulin is released. From the beta cells, insulin came into the bloodstream. Now, what this insulin will do? See, insulin is going to act on the skeletal muscles. Insulin is going to act on the adipose tissues. On its receptor, that's a tyrosine kinase receptor. When insulin is acting on the tissues, now, now only tissues will start to implant these channels before these channels are not there. When insulin is acting on the skeletal muscles, then this skeletal muscles will plant these channels on their cell surface. Now, what are these channels? These are also glucose transporters. They are GLUT4, G-L-U-T-4. So, GLUT4 transporters are incorporated or planted on the skeletal muscles or the tissues under the influence of insulin. Now, these GLUT4 transporters will uptake the glucose. So, glucose is entering into the skeletal muscles. Okay. Now, important point is, see, insulin stimulates the glucose entry into the cell by 
फेसिलिटेट डिफ्यूजन सो दिस मूवमेंट ऑफ ग्लूकोज फ्रॉम द ब्लड इन टू द टिश्यू इज इट हैपनिंग जस्ट सिंपली बाई डिफ्यूजन नो इट्स नॉट अ सिंपल डिफ्यूजन the transporter proteins are being involved when a transporter protein is being involved definitely we will call it as facilitated diffusion okay so this is facilitated diffusion and remember how can tissues uptake the glucose tissues will uptake the glucose under the influence of insulin by incorporating glut4 transporter on their cell surface so glucose 4 transporter is helping in absorption of glucose from the blood into tissues Okay, that's a very important point which you should know. Now let's see some important MCQ, guys. Yeah, see here. Now beta cells senses blood glucose levels with how beta cells know when the blood glucose level is increasing or when the blood glucose levels are going down with the help of blood two transporters. Now release of insulin from beta cells depends on which ion channels. Release of insulin. From the beta cells mainly depends on which which ion channels. It is ATP sensitive. Okay, ATP sensitive potassium channels. Okay, ATP sensitive potassium channels are the ones responsible for the release of insulin from the beta cells. Now, after this, see here, guys, one important statement in insulin resistance. like diabetes mellitus in insulin resistance which channels will be affected glucose 4 transporters are down regulated okay see insulin resistance means insulin is there but it cannot stimulate it cannot stimulate the insulin receptors when insulin is not able to stimulate the insulin receptors now what happen to the glucose 4 transporters concentration on the tissues glucose 4 transporter concentration will be decreased why because insulin cannot stimulate its receptor so automatically glut4 transporter concentration is going to go down so glucose is not being transported from the blood into the tissue so blood levels of glucose will be elevated that's what is diabetes mellitus okay type 1 diabetes mellitus because of insulin resistance okay now after this let's see two more important mcq guys insulin mainly stimulates glucose uptake in which tissues insulin is stimulating which tissues it's stimulating skeletal muscles okay then adipose tissue okay now insulin dependent not dependent guys please concentrate here this is the word insulin independent okay insulin dependent glucose uptake is happening in skeletal muscles and adipose tissue we all know that insulin independent this independent is the keyword insulin independent glucose uptake is seen in very important brain or the central nervous system and rbc now what does i mean by your brain doesn't require insulin normal tissues they want insulin they need insulin for the glucose uptake if there is no insulin no glucose transporter type 4 no glucose uptake into the tissue but brain is not something like that brain doesn't need insulin if, even if there is no insulin brain can still uptake the glucose that is called as a basal uptake of glucose with the help of glucose 1 transporters okay that we would have already studied in biochemistry so simple glucose independent sorry insulin independent glucose uptake is seen in which body tissues brain and rbc Okay guys hope the video is helpful in the next video we'll discuss more uh, points about insulin with the pharma integrations see you in the next video